Do your kids seem to have favorite things they fight about? Maybe they have a hard time taking turns with a TV remote, or one is always getting into the other stuff, or is just simply breathing their air. Sometimes it might seem like they don't even need a real reason to fight. Why can't they just let things go and get along? Hey there, I'm Dr. Dave, and on today's Thrive in Five, I'll be sharing some tips for parents of kiddos ages two through six about how to help kids get along. It can be pretty stressful for parents when their kids fight. I totally get it. That atmosphere of yelling and contention isn't fun for anyone. Sometimes the reason for the fight seems silly. And of course, we want our kids to love and be nice to each other, right? Well, they probably do love each other, but sometimes, especially when they're young, they need your help to work through problems, have their needs met, and show that precious love they have for each other some of the time. All right, so here's some tips that can help. First. Take a deep breath and try to look at things from your child's perspective. All of us have at least three basic needs, safety, satisfaction, and connection. And kiddos' number one goal in life is to have their needs met. And this is totally normal, especially when kids are young. So when someone gets in the way of that goal, it's natural for them to seem like a threat, right? Maybe even an enemy. That might sound dramatic, but all too often, that's how they see a brother or a sister. So how do they react? They fight. There are better ways to handle their feelings, of course, and this is where you as a parent come in. They need your help to think about how the other sibling is feeling, what they need, and how they can help everyone's needs get met without fighting. Your patience and guidance, and patience and creativity, and patience makes a huge difference in their learning, this kind of negotiating and problem solving. So tip number two, make time for each child. Kiddos want our undivided time and attention. Getting to spend one-on-one -on -one time with mom or dad makes a big difference in helping a child feel important and loved. It's an important need for them that might be threatened by another sibling. So regularly schedule time, even if it's only 20 to 30 minutes or so, to do something with each child that they love to do. And get them involved in the planning for your special time together. That can be half the fun, right? One note with this, specific times such as seven o'clock or one hour don't mean much to little kids. So try saying things like right after dinner or once the baby's in bed instead. My third tip is to be a calming influence when your kiddos are fighting. This can definitely be tricky. You might be pretty upset with them. Okay, there's a good chance you'll be stressed and upset with them, but they need your help to stop fighting and feel safe. It will only make things harder if you're really worked up or yelling. So if you can, again, take a deep breath, watch your tone, and imagine how your best self would show up to the situation, and sit them down and assure them that you care about both of their thoughts and feelings. If you ever need to physically separate them sometimes or express your feelings strongly, focus on behavior and avoid insulting their character. For example, instead of saying, why can't you get along? That was such a mean thing to do. You could say, you're really angry right now. I can't let you hurt each other. All right, tip number four, be patient and really listen to what they have to say. Remember that all feelings are acceptable, even if some behaviors need to be limited, and acknowledging feelings, even those like anger, is an important step in helping kids work through the feelings. Lectures, threats, and blaming can make things so much worse, and dismissing their issue as silly isn't very helpful either. Instead, try to tap into some empathy and give each child a chance to express themselves. And as they do, see if you can figure out the need each of them is trying to have met. The key is remembering that feelings must be accepted before behavior can be improved. Tip number five, problem solve together. Your kiddos will probably need your help finding a way to meet both of their needs. Start with acknowledging each child's feelings and needs. Okay, this is huge. You might say something like, it sounds like one of you wants to watch a movie that the other one thinks is scary. That can be pretty frustrating. We need some ideas that can help both of you. Let's think about how we can solve this together. Now, if they're really little, they might need your help to get started coming up with ideas, but you can still find ways to involve them in the process and find something they can both be happy with. For example, maybe you can suggest a movie they both like or get out a favorite art activity for one in another room while the other watches the movie. 
Working through this process with your kids can help them learn to do it with each other. But remember, this will take time, like years of time, so be patient. So those are my tips for today. First, look at things from your child's perspective. Second, make time for each child. Third, be a calming influence. Fourth, be patient and really listen to them. And fifth, problem solve together. Remember that like anything new, these skills take time and practice, practice, practice. You're human. You have your own feelings and challenges and it may not always go well. But the great thing is you usually have a chance to reconnect with your kiddos and try and try again. Hey, before I go, please take a second and give this video a like, share it, subscribe, and leave a comment to let me know what tips you have for helping kids get along with each other in your place. Well, that's all for today. I'm Dr. Dave, and this has been another Thrive in 5 Parenting Tips for Kids 2-6. through six. For the best relationship tips and happy hacks, visit drdavespeaks.com.